Hi everybody, it's Kasha Dupuy here with from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library um, and we're here for this Wednesday's uh, regularly scheduled STEAM story time. So every Wednesday at 11 o'clock um, right from the library we do a live stream story time where we talk about um, different concepts about STEAM. So if you don't know what STEAM is, STEAM is all about science, technology, engineering or environment, art and math. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And I'm actually very excited because um, we're going to be talking about um, insects in winter and what insects and bugs do to save um, warmth and to survive the winter. So I have a really cool book to read. Um, we have a really cool activity to do. And I have some really cool videos I want to show you about insect hotels. So we actually have some insect hotels here in Niagara. Um, so maybe I will tell you where you can go to see them. So we're just going to wait another minute or so before we get started. Um, if you are watching, um, you can type hi to me in the comments because I can see um, if people say hi to me and stuff. Uh, so then I can say hi to you on camera, which is very exciting. Um, so let me just get everything set up. And we are set up, but let me just get my video ready. And then I will switch over to say hi and we can get started. Okay, so awesome. So you know what? I'm going to switch over the camera and say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Um, so thank you for joining me today um, for this week's STEAM Storytime. My name is Kasha Dupuy. I'm from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library, and we're here to learn all about what insects do in winter. So I have a really cool book to share with you that we're going to start very soon. Um, I have some videos to show you about insect hotels, um, and then I'm going to show you how you can make your very own insect hotel. It's more like an insect cottage, though. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit smaller, not quite a hotel. Um, so just a couple things before we get started. Um, yes, I'm in the library. I do have my mask right here, but because I'm on camera, I get to take it off so you can see me. Um, we have lots of, of stuff going on today. Um, we have some people here for computer appointments. The doorbell might ring. People might walk past. No worries. Um, it will just make the live stream more exciting. Hi, Sam and Frankie. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Um, and then also, if for some reason um, the camera or the internet stops working, I will try my best to be back. If it doesn't work, I will continue to record this as a video and we will upload it to our YouTube channel afterwards. Um, also, since I know that there's no school for some people today, if you're looking for something fun to do later, um, we do have a whole bunch of Steam story times on our YouTube channel. So we actually have, I think, like 30 of them. So if you're looking for something to do later, that is something you can check out. So why don't we get started with our book. And I'm just going to move over, oh, I always make a mistake, this way a little bit more. And the book we're going to read today is called Not a Buzz to be Found, Insects in Winter. And it's written by Linda Glazer and illustrated by Jamie Zollers. So illustrated means he did the pictures. Um, and this was also published in 2012, 2012, um, by Millbrook Press in Minneapolis. So thank you very much, Millbrook Press, for letting us use this awesome book in our STEAM story time today. I really like this one because it talks about all different kinds of insects. Yep, some you'll recognize, some might be new to you. So let's get started. So Not a Buzz to be Found, Insects in Winter by Linda Glazer and illustrations by Jamie Zollers. Okay, and there's actually a really nice dedication in this book. And it reminds me of a couple other people that I can think off the top of my head. But it says, for Griffin, who loves finding bugs in his garden. And I know a little boy who likes finding bugs in our garden. So let me just move over this way a little bit better so you can see the book. You don't have to see me so much, but. <laughs> Ready? In summer, insects are all around, zipping, buzzing, zooming everywhere. But in winter, poof, they're all gone. Not a zip or a buzz or a zoom anywhere. Where do insects go when it's icy and cold? What do they do to survive? If you were a little insect, what would you do to stay alive? Oh, does anyone know what kind of bug that is? What kind of insect? It's a monarch butterfly. If you were a monarch butterfly, you'd take an amazing flight. You'd fly, through thousands, of you'd fly thousands of miles migrating south where it doesn't freeze, and they go down to Mexico. There, you join millions of monarchs, all gathered together in trees. So that's a real place. There's a spot in Mexico where all the monarch butterflies in North America, they fly all the way down. It's really cool. It's beautiful to see. 
Let's see what the next one is. If you were a woolly, woolly bear caterpillar, you'd hide under a blanket of snow or leaves. Someday you'd turn into a moth with wings. But in winter, you'd curl up and sleep, sleep, sleep. So can you see those little caterpillars right there? Yeah, that's what they do in the winter. They climb under the leaves because it's nice and warm in the leaves. Um, and that's where they sleep until spring when they turn into a moth. Now, what are those? Let's see if you can tell me what those are, if you can see up close. Those are ladybugs. If you were a ladybird beetle, which is another name for ladybug, you'd hide under logs or leaves and huddle with thousands of others. You'd barely move or breathe. So that's what they do all winter. Ladybugs huddle together in little, little kind of packs or clans um, under the leaves to stay warm. They're not lonely, I'd say that. <laughs> what if you were a honeybee? You'd eat the sweet honey in your hive and huddle with all the other bees. You'd stay warm together. You'd all stay warm together, each taking turns in the warmest spot in the center. So this page is really cool because see that big one right here? That's the queen bee, and she's in the middle of the hive, and all the bees kind of take turns swirling around the center there because the center is the warmest. So they all take turns sharing the warmth. They're very good sharers, those bees. If you were a morning cloak butterfly, you'd hide under the, back, the bark of a tree and go into a deep, deep sleep. But you wouldn't freeze. Why not? You'd have something inside you like antifreeze. So that's interesting. These butterflies have something um, that's in their body, kind of like blood that keeps them from freezing. Kind of like stuff that's in your car, antifreeze. It stops all the parts of the car from freezing. So those bugs have the same kind of thing. Those butterflies do. Okay, now look at that. Those are eggs. Now let's see what it says about them. What if you were a praying mantis? You'd still be an egg in a small case with hundreds of others waiting to hatch. All winter long, you'd stay snug and safe. So these are all baby praying mantises in here. Those are all praying mantis eggs, and that's how they survive the winter. They stay in close and knit just like that so that they can stay warm. If you were a common pond hawk dragonfly, you'd still be a baby nymph without wings. You'd look like a small water bug and live in a pond way down in the mud. So that's those there. Those are little nymphs. And those are going to transform and turn into dragonflies when it's warm again in the spring. Oh, and you know what? Are you guys paying attention to what's going on up here? This girl's skating on the pond because it's so cold. The pond froze over, well, the top layer anyway. And under here, everything's still alive. So you know what? Let's look back really quick. Oh, he's maybe going for a walk. I think there's another one coming up soon. Oh yeah, okay, they're building a snowman. There's a, there's a village in the winter right there. If you were an ant in the winter, you'd stay underground in your nest with the other ants in your colony. Safe from the cold, you'd all just rest. So I know someone who loves ants um, and this is their colony. And ants are very busy. If you've ever watched an ant, like in the backyard, in the front yard, or anywhere, they are always doing things. So they kind of get to rest all winter because it's cold. So they just huddle in their little houses, kind of like hibernation, kind of cool. Oh, what are those kids doing? Sledding. They're sledding down the hill. Now this is a gall fly. If you were a gall fly in winter, you'd still be a baby living in a gall. And this is a gall right here. You'd chew a little opening to get out in the spring, but all winter you'd stay in that small round ball. Doesn't that look cozy? That looks so cozy. <laughs> oh, look at those kids. What are they doing? I think they're having a snowball fight. <laughs> what if you were a field cricket? You'd still be a tiny egg that mother cricket laid right there. All winter long you'd stay in the earth, safely hidden. You'd wait and wait. Now this page is kind of cool because there's a little tiny bunny hidden there. I don't know if you guys can see. 
Yep, so the bunny would be under the earth as well. And then what are these? Maybe tell the people that you're with in the room, what are those? Earthworms, right? They live pretty much underground most of the time. Now this one's, a, I like this page, it's really cool. She looks like she's climbing on logs with her puppy. If you were a bald-faced horned hornet queen, <laughs> you'd crawl into a rotting log and hide. You'd stay fast asleep all winter with your baby eggs safe inside you. So there, she hasn't laid the eggs yet, but she's crawled into a log where it's safe and warm, and that's where she waits until spring, so she can come out and lay her eggs. Now this one's very interesting. I've never seen these before, and I wonder if you can pick out where the swallowtail butterflies are, are in this page. If you were a black swallowtail butterfly, you'd still be a caterpillar without any wings. Inside your chrysalis, safely hidden, you'd sleep all winter just waiting for spring. So when I was looking at this page at first, I wasn't sure where they were, because I thought these were leaves. But these are actually the little chrysalises that look like leaves, so they're camouflaged. But this is where the swallowtail butterflies hang, hang out, hide, <laughs> um, all winter. Yeah, to stay safe. And so that they can transform into butterflies when it gets warmer. Oh, look, let's see what's happening now. Then slowly, slowly, the air grows warmer. And just as slowly as the days grow longer, you feel a change in the air, and so do insects everywhere. Some wake up, some hatch, some fly north, and some grow wings. It's time to zip and buzz and fly. Winter is over. At last, it's spring. Check out all those bugs that came awake again. Yeah, or hatched. So um, we're just at the very beginning of winter. So we've got a long way to go, but this is what we can expect for spring. And we'll do a special STEAM story time all about um, the insects that come out in spring again when it's spring. So just before we go over to show you the video that I have about um, an insect hotel, these are some of the insects. And this is why I like this book so much because it gives you an explanation about all of them. So that's the monarch butterfly. That's the woolly bear caterpillar, um, which turns into a tiger moth. Um, that's a ladybug. Most of you know a ladybug. There's a honeybee. Um, this one though, this is a morning cloak butterfly right here. I don't know if we have those where we live, but they're really pretty. Praying mantis and a pond hawk dragonfly. So we have those, I think. And an ant. Look at that cute little ant. A gall fly. I've never really seen one of those. A field cricket, um, a hornet, and a black swallowtail butterfly. See how beautiful that is? Really pretty. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that book. I really like this one. It's called Not a, Bu Not a Buzz to be Found, Insects in Winter. And again, it was written by Linda Glazer with illustrations by Jamie Zollers. And it was published in 2012 by Millbrook Press in Minneapolis. So thank you again for letting us use this awesome book in our STEAM story time. Okay, so let me show you what an insect hotel looks like. Because all of these insects, they have their own ways of keeping themselves warm and safe in the winter. But sometimes, um, we, sometimes they need a little bit of help and we can give them a little bit of help by making things like this. So let's see, this is an insect hotel. So if you look up close, there is, um, there's quite a bit of things in there. So there's some logs with holes in them. There are these reeds that are hollow that are in there. There's some pine cones and some grass. So that is an insect hotel. So many different kinds of bugs will burrow inside there um, and they will get nice and warm and feel safe so that they can have somewhere to hide out for the winter and keep warm. So here's a close up. So if you watch this one carefully, you can actually see some of the solitary bees. So they're not honey bees. They're different kinds of bees that are going into the logs um, and you know laying their eggs or getting nice and warm and cozy. And see how some of them have like, like a wall up? They've actually plugged everything um, really well so that they can stay safe in there. So that's their way of keeping themselves and their eggs warm and cozy and safe. So we're going to make something kind of like that today. Um, but instead of a big one like this, we're going to make a bug cottage. So hi, everybody. So if you're going to make a bug cottage today, and this is something that you can do at home, and it's very simple, um, you're going to need some things like this. So I have a um, 
paper towel rule here. You can also use toilet paper rolls. It depends how big of a bug cottage you'd like to make. You're going to need some leaves, just like this. And I'm gonna put them here. Um, you're going to need some sticks. So I have a whole bunch of sticks here and they're from different kinds of plants. And another really good thing you can have, and I was only able to find a couple pieces, is some really dry grass, just like this. So you can go on a, um, on a scavenger hunt to find all these kind of things that you can then put into your bug hotel or your bug cottage. So this one's a little bit big, so I'm actually gonna take some scissors, and if you're going to make a smaller one, make sure um, adults are going to help you cut anything you need. There we go, so I'm gonna put one over here. So we have our little paper tube here, and I'm going to write bug cottage on it. So I'm gonna write bug cottage. And the reason I'm going to write this is because sometimes if people might come across it, if you go to put this in a you know wooded area, if there's a path you like to go on, they might think this is garbage and just pick it up and toss it. But if some bugs have already made their way inside, they would be tossing those poor little bugs in the garbage. So I'm gonna put it on here um, so people will know. And you know what, I'm going to be nice and welcoming and I'm gonna put all bugs welcome because of course they would be all bugs welcome, just like that. So that's all the decoration you need to put on. If you wanted to put a little bit more, you could, um, but this is the fun part. So we have this hollow part inside of this tube, and what we're going to do is pack it full of leaves and sticks um, and things that bugs would find cozy to um, you know, tuck in for the winter. So I have some sticks. This one is a little bit, you know what, it's actually not quite too long. So I'm going to just put it in there like this. And then I have like a sister stick here. I think it's from the same branch. I'm gonna tuck it in like that. And now this one is a little bit too long. What could we do with this one? Well, you know what? We can break it, fold it together, and kind of push it in just like that. So I have one layer of sticks in there. And what I'm gonna do now is start taking some leaves, and it's kind of noisy. <laughs> taking some leaves and start packing them in the tube, just like that. So for us, does this look really cozy? Not really, we're used to like beds and pillows and soft blankets and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for bugs, this would be a super cozy and warm space to maybe hang out for the winter. So I'm gonna put a bit on both sides, just like so. And you know what, I'm gonna put this other stick in here as well. Um, if you are looking for different things to put in your bug hotel, um, if you're able to find moss, um, that's a perfect thing because that is warm. Um, and you know what? It can actually grow on the inside of your um, paper tube here. Yeah, I wasn't able to find any moss today. Um, so let's get some of these kind of fuzzy grasses in here. So I have these ones like this. So I'm just going to fold it in half and then going to kind of just feed it in just like that. And you know what, I'm going to fold this and kind of tuck it in as well, just like so. Ooh, and I like this one. I think this was, this was like a flower. These are probably seeds. You know what, maybe there are some bugs that would be able to eat those seeds for food over the winter, just like that. So I'm just pushing all of this stuff in and it doesn't need to really look pretty, although you can make it look as pretty as you like. Um, and you know what, we're pretty full actually. Oh, also, if you live near a tree that has like acorns or walnuts, usually acorns, maybe not walnuts, um, you can also put those inside your little bug cottage just like that. Because um, sometimes there are insects that will actually burrow right inside of an acorn and that's where, that's where they will spend most of their winter because it's nice and safe inside there. Okay, so this is my little bug cottage. So what I would do um, once it's all full, and you know what, I can make another one, but let's see how many you guys can make. Um, I would go outside and I would find a spot that is protected. So maybe under like some leaves, like by my house, there is a whole bunch of leaves that gather by the front, um, front porch. So I might tuck it in there. You could maybe put it underneath a rock. If you go for nature walks, you can find like a nice log and maybe put it underneath there. But those are the best places um, that insects will be able to find this um, and use it for the winter. Yeah, so that's how you make a little bug cottage. So um, I actually have another video that I wanna show you really quickly. Um, and it's actually of the big 
um, bug hotel that I showed you earlier um, during winter. So yeah, so the one we made today isn't quite as big or as, as cool as that. We just made one in about two minutes. Um, but this one is really cool. And actually, if you go to Niagara Falls, um, there is a big bee hotel, I think, or a big bug hotel um, that's right on their grounds. And if you go and take, take a look at it, you'll be able to see the ones, the spots that are covered by the bees. They put up those little walls because they're getting ready for winter. Okay, so that is, that's our STEAM story time for today. So we talked about what bugs do in the winter. We read a book all about how different bugs do different things to protect themselves and keep themselves safe and warm to survive the winter. We made our very own bug cottages and our bug hotels. Um, and we saw different big bug hotels. Um, and some of them are in Niagara that you can go see by yourself. So um, thank you all for joining me very today. Very Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, if you make a bug cottage um, or a bug hotel, send me a picture. My email is on the side over there and I would love to see some of these bug hotels, um, especially since some uh, people are not in school today. This would be a fun activity to do um, and help the bugs in your neighborhood as well. Um, if you do uh, take a picture, um, send it to me in my email or you can post it to our social media or ask mom and dad to post it um, and tag us at um, NOTL Library and we will see it and we'll share it on our pages. Okay, so I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Um, this video will be uploaded to YouTube afterwards if you want to watch it again or use it in the future, you totally can. Um, and otherwise, I hope you have a great day and we will see you next Wednesday at 11 o'clock and we're going to be talking about numbers. So we're going to be finding some hidden numbers and go on a number scavenger hunt. Okay, bye everybody. Have a great Wednesday and we'll see you next week. Bye Sam, bye Frankie. Thank <laughs> you.